Good afternoon for everyone joining us from the US. Uh, good morning for those who are joining us from the region down in Australia. Welcome to a one strand information session. This morning's session is on getting acquainted with S1000D business rules and BR docs. My name is Tammy Holter and I will be your host today and I will be joined by Ms Rita Nye. Good morning Rita. Morning Tammy. The session this morning will run for approximately 45 to 50 minutes leaving us about 10 or 15 minutes at the end for any questions that you may have. Which brings us to a little bit of housekeeping. On your screen you should have a panel that looks something like the picture in the top right hand corner. Automatically you were muted as you came into today's session so you don't have to worry about any background noise. If you have any questions or comments please type them in the question panel. And if you want to minimise that panel so it's not blocking your screen, just click on that orange arrow and that will make it a tiny little uh, icon panel. And of course if you do need to ask a question again, just re-click on the orange arrow again to bring up the full panel for you to type in. A little bit of a background on who One Strand are for those who may not have had any dealings with us in the last 18 months since the company started. One Strand is actually the combination of a shared vision of two industry leading companies, Absolute Data Group from Brisbane, Australia and AEC Inc out of Oregon in the US. Under the One Strand brand, our companies provide our customers and partners with the most comprehensive set of solutions for creating and managing your technical documentation and data. We offer cost-effective, user-friendly S1000D solutions and our comprehensive set of tools provide our customers with everything they need to simply manage the life cycle of their technical documentation. For over 30 years we've had an experienced team of technical documentation services combined with decades of experience developing our information management software applications. We've worked closely with regulatory agencies to deliver products and services that meet stringent requirements for defence and aerospace industry and programs. And we earn our place each day with our customers and our partners and value our long-term relationships. Just a little bit of a snapshot on the One Strand product suite. So in, within One Strand we're using the R4I product suite and these are just a couple of the key tools that our customers use every day. We do have a broader range of products but the core ones are the R4I CSDB or Common Source Database which is of course used for managing and publishing your content to IETPs whether that's a viewer GUI GUI Base 1, HTML5 and other electronic delivery formats for your S1000D projects. R4i Writer is our powerful XML authoring tool which is optimised for S1000D data formats. It's available in a personal edition which you can run standalone or you can run it connected to, to our common source database. We have R4i Viewer which is our royalty free online and offline so it runs in both modes out in the field offline or online connected to the CSTB and it's our IETM or our IETP Viewer. And we have R4i Binder which is our very loved uh, book publishing tool so it's a powerful drag and drop tool where you can drag and drop data modules and content from the CSTB to automatically generate your PDFs of your manuals and handbooks and large technical books. Binder works with um, any SGML or XML content so it doesn't have to be S1000D and we do have customers who have a combination of data formats that uh, they utilise in producing their manuals. We have IPD Manager or Illustrated Parts Data Manager and this tool saves ma massive amount of time by automatically generating hundreds of IPD data modules within a few minutes by pointing the system to your engineering parts database or spreadsheet. And then worth having a mention as well is if uh, 
looking at installing or purchasing software upfront is not an option for your project. Then we also have a hosted version of our products available in the cloud and you can check out the packages that are available at a per user per month cost at shop.onestrand.com. So now that we have that housekeeping out of the way, let's have a chat about your presenter this morning, who is of course Rita Nye. Good morning, Rita. Morning, Tammy. So Rita is a senior consultant at Absolute Data Group, which of course now makes her a senior consultant in the One Strand uh, business unit. So now that we're a division of the One Strand team, Rita has over 13 years experience in IT, including SGML and XML publishing projects. And she has been specialising, of course, for the last nine years in S1000D and dynamic database publishing projects, which includes, of course, delivery to web and complex print requirements. Rita is a trainer, which is why we get her involved in a lot of the theory and product demonstrations that we do on a monthly basis. And uh, not only does Rita work uh, a lot with our own XML authoring tool, R4I Writer, but she's also worked with a lot of the legacy tools that our customers use in the marketplace, such as Arbor Text Editor or Adobe FrameMaker. Rita's played with version 7 all the way through to 2017 when it comes to Adobe FrameMaker. But she is most famously known for her style sheet development, um, both XSLT, but in particular her wonderful faux work for producing <laughs> PDF output to, to looking in, like anything you want it to be from your S1000D content. <laughs> or other data. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah, or other HTML or XML data. That's so welcome Rita and uh, looking forward to this topic this morning. This is one we haven't had too much of a, bit, a background on so no. far, being a, a new one in 4.2. So I am going to hand the con over to you yep. and let you kick off this morning. Okay, so I thought just to make sure everybody's aware of where we're going with this and it helped me actually put my train of thought together, I thought we'd put in a little bit of a history of what the process is that we're going to look at. So first of all, we're going to have a little bit of a look at the history of the business rules in terms of what are business rules, why do we need them, and how can we implement BRICS, which everyone keeps on looking at again. Yep, BRICS, that's just one thing that we really do need to know, know about. Then. It's not going to be a full demonstration, but I'm going to open up a BR Docs schema data module just so that we can actually have a look at what's involved or what do we need to consider when we're writing the BRICS. So we're actually authoring it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're not really going to go into a full detail to it, but it'll give us a little bit of an idea. And then we're just going to go through a little bit of a summary of what extra information we need to be aware of. Now, before we actually kick off, Tammy, I'd actually like to run a poll, please. So what I'd like to know is, based on everybody's attendance today, how do they currently produce and prepare their business rules? So what do they currently use? Do they do the wonderful Word program? Mm -hmm. Do they use S1000D? And I'm assuming then that they would be using the descriptive module. Or are they using something else? And I'd love to know what that something else is mm -hmm. if they are using it. So if they can just pop the information into the question panel for that. Okay, so, so if they tick other, if they can tell us what they're using other than like S1000D descriptive or Word. Yep. yep. Okay. So let's just see how we go. Okay, so that has launched on the screen for everyone now, Rita. Excellent. So, so do you use Word? Do you use S1000D descriptive data modules, which we do in-house currently, don't we, for our business we do. rules? Yes. Yep. yep. And um, if you're using something else, tick other, and then um, if you can pop in the question panel um, what that other tool is. Ah, so there we go. So uh, we've got someone that uses Excel. Okay. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. Right, okay. We have 100% of the votes in. Fantastic. Okay, so an interesting mix. We've got 43% um, of the people are using Word. 14% mm -hmm. um, are using S1000D descriptive data modules, um, obviously of various uh, versions. And then we have 43% also sitting on other. Um, not everyone shared with us, I don't think, what they were using, but we have a combination of um, Excel, um, we've, uh, someone's indicated they actually don't have their business rules yet. Okay. Uh, we do have someone who's actually using a blank data module using the Brex template. Mm -hmm. 
so um, yes, yeah, so we do have um, a, a good variety <laughs> of um, ways that people are preparing. So fantastic! Uh, I'm going to hide that, and yep. uh, so then you can kick off. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do is we need to little go back just that little bit, and let's look at the history. So let's have a look at this. So first of all, we need to be able to identify what are business rules. So with that. When you decide to implement S1000D as a project, what you're going to do is you need to be able to make a decision on a whole range of different items and they then need to be documented into a, a location that everybody has access to so that we can then see what the information is, how we can identify it. So if you have a look at the S1000D specification, and you've got to be aware of which version of the spec you're working with because each one is quite different. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at um, version 4 and below, there's a whole range where you've literally got to look through the whole spec to find these decision points. Mm -hmm. So they're just written into the text where you need to make a decision on this particular point. In version 4.1, that was then added to with a business rules decision point index, so it's a BRDP index. So each of the um, decision points were then categorised into this particular list of index information. So with version 4.1, there ended up being about 520-ish index decision points. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few of them. So you have, if you can go through and literally make a decision on every index or every decision point that's there, Yep, you're covering everything that's inside your business rules. Mm -hmm. So okay. you're basically going through the spec, slowly working through, and where they're, which as you said, they're now highlighting um, decisions that you should make on this particular yep. area or topic of the spec, whether you're doing nothing with it or doing something with it, at least you're making a decision on whether Correct. it's appropriate for your so project. The S1000D spec has already identified a range of different decision points. That doesn't mean that they're the only decision points that you need to make. Okay, so they're, you can make more. You can make an additional decision mm -hmm. point at any point in time. Mm -hmm. So if you were working with 4.1, you would then make your own decision point. Mm -hmm. So the way S1000D has defined to make this index, it's BRDP, Business Rules Decision Point. Yep. Then it's if it's an S1000D decision, it's recognised as S1, so it's identifying who is the organisation that made the decision. And then it's a five-digit number, which increments for each new decision. Mm -hmm. So if an organisation is making a decision, they would then do BRDP, their organisation ID, mm -hmm. and the first decision they make would be 0001. Mm -hmm. So you would then go through that process. Yep. So you need to develop these business rules. Now, these business rules aren't going to tell you how to run the business. That's not the design of these. No. What they're looking at is how do we implement S1000D into the project and how is the, the organisation going to use this information. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the information that goes into those business rules range between information that is really focused for an author yep. as well as information that relates to the whole project. Yep. So you need to be able to identify the differences between that information. So you need to be able to build the business rules and you need to develop the breadth that's based on that information. There's three ways that we can build those business rules. Option one is you as an organisation write your business rules and develop your breadths. Mm -hmm. So any project you're going to implement, that's the rules you're going to so use. Develop them for your entire organisation. Yep. Yep. Option number two is that your customer issues you with their business rules and their breaks. Mm -hmm. So you're delivering to their project with their rules. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you're then only working with their criteria. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to look at any of the information or rules that you've already got internally. Mm -hmm. You're going to work with the criteria that your customer has dictated. Mm -hmm. The third option is actually emerging of the two. So you can then say, okay, we want to work with this part of our business rules and we're happy to work with this part of your business rules. Mm -hmm. So you can actually merge the two together and then you can merge and become either two individual breaks, as in a layered breaks process, mm -hmm. or you can merge in all that information into one breaks. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So you've got three different ways that you can implement your BREX into your organisation and mm -hmm. your business rules. Yep. So you need to have that information. So just a quick snapshot, and I mean we've covered this topic before, but business rules are the documented, human readable Correct. notes on what rules we're using for our project, where the BREX is a schema validation for, as you're authoring, it's guiding you in the editing process, right? Correct. So what you want to be able to do is you write your business rules which is what you and everybody else in the, in the organisation is going to read. Mm -hmm. And so you, back when we look at all of our other business rules topics that we've ever done, you don't want to go and talk to John in the back corner to say, Oh, what should we, we do be doing? This? Yeah, that's right. Oh, which schema are we using for that? Which elements, which attributes? Yeah, yeah. Um, what graphic <laughs> format are we using? Yeah, you yeah. don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. If an author or if a new person comes on board or if an author has a question, the only place they should be going to is your business it's rules. rules. Yep. So it's the human readable side. And of it. again, whether that's the customers or yours or yep. combo or both, that's where they're going. Yep. That's it. Because it's the point of reference. It's the control point. Yep. So what we do is we build those business rules and then from the information that's written into those business rules, you then build your BREX. Yep. And the BREX is what the computer system is then going to do the validation Again. And again, it, the BREX is only validating your authoring component, right? Correct. So that's, the business rules is more global. It can be Absolutely. Pro, you know, specific project um, driven or the entire company. This is how we run all of our projects. But the BREX is specifically just for your authoring Correct. part. Correct, because you want to make sure that you're validating. Now, your BREX can have context and non-contextual information. Mm -hmm. It can have both sets. But to be able to do validation against the BREX, obviously, it's the contextual yeah. information. Yeah. Yeah. It can't do validation against non-contextual. Non yeah. Yeah. So when we start looking at our business rules, the first things that we need to make decisions on are what version of the S1000D specification are we working with? Mm -hmm. What schemas are we working with? What elements and attributes are we working with? What's your SNS? What are the, the disassembly code and disassembly code variants? All of that information needs to be documented into your business rules. Mm. So what we would do is we would sit down and analyse your project and come up with that direction. Mm -hmm. And that information then gets written into the business rules. So we can then see all of that information. Once we've then done that, so we've written all of this information and inside all of that we may have also written this wonderful thing called an X part. So we're actually identifying mm -hmm what is the location of that particular element or attribute, Yep. we then have to build our BREX, yep. which is your business rules exchange. Yep. That's all it is. It's yep. just the, the short, the anagram for business rules exchange. Mm -hmm. It's how you're, ex how you're communicating that information between the project deliverables. Mm -hmm. So we're then going through and identifying that information. So someone has to sit down and physically write that bricks. Yep. There's no easy way at this point in time. At this point in time <laughs> yep. to get that to be written. Yep. So there's a whole range of tools out there that can help, possibly, mm -hmm. but you've really got to be able to analyze it and identify what that information is. Yep. So that's what we're coming from when we're starting to work with the business rules. Okay, so that's a background on it. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And as as we said, we've done quite a few different webinars. On business, business rules, rules and breaks. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So Let's jump forward now to version 4.2 mm -hmm. of the specification. There were two new schemas that were implemented into 4.2, and one of those, which is the one that we're going to focus on today, is the BR Doc schema. Yep. Okay. So what we did was, or what they did, not me, but what S1000D did, was they developed this new structure. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a descriptive schema. Yep. So it has... A the, relationship. Sort of core. It's a, yep. It's got a relationship. You can start to see it some feels of the, descriptive. -y. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but what it does is it allows you to write that information. Now, if you've been writing your S1000D business rules as S1000D data modules, mm -hmm. which is what we usually recommend for a customer when they're going to implement a new project. Yep. If they don't already have business rules, 
write them as S1000 D data modules, but yep. it gives them really good experience. It's good experience, isn't it, in starting to write data modules? It yeah. is, yeah. and it also means that they're getting experience with the version of the spec that they've got to write for. Mm. So it's really they can even test publishing to PDF as, and IATP. Absolutely. And, yep. But what they would do is they would use the info code of 022. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the specification, Rex is 022. That's yep. the info code. Yep. So what they've done with the BR docs is they have also defined a new information code. Okay, so specifically this is 4.2 for BR doc schemas, you've got a special information code. Yep, and yep. it's 024. Okay. So if you're going to use the BR doc schema, yep. you know that your info code is always going to be 024. Right. So that's the first point that we need to be identifying mm -hmm. so that we know what so as soon as you see that, you know it to be our doc. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anybody, when they start looking at any of the S1000D data module codes, especially if you start looking at the wonderful bicycle samples, yep. you can straight away see which one is oh, the... Oh, they're descriptives, they're procedural, they're IPD. Yeah, you start to know the codes. Yeah. Yeah. You may not necessarily know the SNS structure for it yeah. because it's not necessarily what you get familiar with, yeah. but identifying the, the info code, mm. absolutely everybody knows it. Okay, so... We now know it's based on a descriptive schema. Yep. And it's going to use the info code of 024. Yep. So if we have been playing with the version 4 and above descriptive schema, we know that the parent, the, the, the top level element that we can put into the content section is a leveled para. So with this VR doc schema, what they've done is they've grabbed that descriptive leveled para and they've given it a new name, which is a BR level para. So it's still giving you that relationship. Do we supposed to be on the screen? Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so we go through and we identify the level para becomes a BR level para. The title still stays the same. It doesn't deviate. But we've got a new para element, which is called a BR para. So again, we're able to identify this different information. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it allows for all of these business rule decision points to be documented into its own schema. Mm -hmm. So we're identifying all that information and we need to go through and identify all of the BRDPs inside the spec and mm -hmm. write against that information. Okay, so um, I have a question there. So... Um, when you're saying you're having to do each of the business rules decision points, are we thinking that we have to do a individual BR doc module for every business rule decision point? Because that's a lot, right? No, no. <laughs> I would never do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, you, what I would look at is I would break the BRDs down into... Categories or categories. groups or something? Yep. So um, you're jumping a little ahead, but we yep. do... We do have our categories, so we could break them down by categories. We could just break them down into zeros to 100, 100 to 199. Oh, okay. So that yep. you can have that information. It really depends on how. So, so like put the first 100 or 99 into one um, data module and then the next range. Correct. Into, okay, so you could just group them by, oh, I want to put 50 in there or 100 in there or by category, which you'll talk about in a bit as well. Correct. Okay. So you've got a range of different choices yep. that you can use. So, based on that, let's just have a look at the structure. Mm -hmm. So, this is that BR doc structure, structure you were talking about. Yep. Okay. Now, what I've got in this screen grab, this is the minimum that you'd need to put in. Okay. So, these are kind of like the mandatory. These are yep. the mandatory to make your document valid. Okay. Okay. But when we start to look at this, we can look at it and go, oh, this probably a, lot a of, little bit more yeah. that we need to identify. Yeah. So we need to be able to understand the structure. Yep. And then once we've got an understanding of the structure, we can then go in and start to identify what's the additional information. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'll be going through is just trying to get a better understanding Dig a little deeper. Yep. of what this information is. So the first thing we're going to do is come into this BR para. Okay, so the BR para. It's contained within the BR level para. Yep. Okay, so whereas in the descriptive, when you go into the descriptive element, you can put in para, figure, table, level para. Yep. With this one, you, the only child element that could go into the BR doc is BR level para. Mm -hmm. And then you put in your BR, BR lap yep. para. Yep. Okay. 
And when we start to identify that, we then need to look at what do we need to relate to. So the first thing is a decision point. Mm -hmm. So remember the BRDP indexes? Yep. That's going to be your unique identifier because mm -hmm. you want to be able to identify what decision point are we making yep. and all the information that relates to it. So follow the spec. Yep. Follow the spec. We then need to put in the information about what's it related to. Mm -hmm. So we've got two ways that we can do that. The first one is we can put in a DM ref. So all of those decision points, that index of information, you can convert those into their own data modules. Mm -hmm. So again, you could group those into the 0 to 100s, 100 to 199 and such, mm -hmm. and you would then list the information. So you could put in what is the decision point index number, what's its title, what does it relate to, mm -hmm. what paragraph does it relate to inside the spec. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can identify that information, and then in the related to, you would reference to that data module mm -hmm. to the specific paragraph that relates to about that a particular yep. decision point. Yep. The other option is to do an internal reference, the same as what we do now for referencing off to another paragraph or figure or table. Yep. We can reference off to somewhere within the uh, the BR doc itself. Okay. So you can put so we can put extra detail or content in there and reference to it. Yep. Yes. Okay. Where we're still identifying what is the decision point that we're making, mm -hmm. what's its title and such. So we're going through and making those decisions. Okay. So we need to do that. We then need to put in our category group. Mm -hmm. Now this is where we're going to start identifying what types of categories we have mm -hmm. and you need to give each category a number. Okay. Okay. So the decision points have numbers and categories have numbers as well. Correct. We then need to give the category a title and we need to talk about the description of it. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of this particular category? So again, it's allowing us to be able to identify that information. So these categories, again, what the heck is these categories? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is our graphic, so it's not the one that's displayed inside the S1000D specification, but it shows exactly what. So when you're starting to re write your business rules, if you can complete all 10 of those categories, yep. you're covering all the requirements of your business rules. Right. So... What, we've, what they've done is if you can identify which category that business rules decision point relates to, then you know which category attribute you're going to use. Mm -hmm. So CAT 001 all the way through to 010. Mm -hmm. So they're your 10 categories yep. that you need to write Okay, under. so 10 obvious numbers and like you said, that's not probably not a bad way to group. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, potentially have... 10 data modules and you've grouped them by and the business rules for, you know, the data output category is all in one, if that makes sense. So whatever Correct. makes sense to the project. Now you've got to be aware when you're looking at the business rules decision point index, it's not grouped. It's not in that. Case. No. It's not in that. No. What they did when they developed, developed the index, they literally went from the start to the end of the spec, spec. Yep. and each time they came to a decision point, it got the next number. Number. Yeah. So there is no order mm -hmm. inside the spec yep. that relates to these categories. You need to identify which one relates to what category. Mm. So, yeah, so it's a tough call, isn't it? It's like, okay, <laughs> so do we just order it by the index and basically go, okay, each of these decision points or do you kind of go to the index and go and, and decide what category they fall into and then you know all of those numbers are going to be in, in that category, et cetera. Correct. So mm. you need to make some decisions. Yep. So it's not just the jump in and go. Jump in and start writing that puppy. <laughs> <laughs> right. It just doesn't quite mm. work that way. Okay, so pretty normal, really. Yeah. Yeah. So be aware of the categories because you need to identify what index it is and the category. And the category. Yeah, so even if you're not grouping them all or putting them into modules that are categories, you still have to identify that in the detail anyway. Absolutely. Right. So once we get to that point, then the next thing that we really need to be able to identify is your, your decision point. What are you, what's the text that we're relating? What is the actual decision that we need to make? So you then need to put in that information about what is the decision that we need to make mm -hmm. based on the information that's inside the specification. Mm -hmm. So we're, again, documenting all this information, which then, of course, takes us to the decision of what is the decision. 
okay, so for instance, graphic format might be the decision is CGM yeah. only. Correct. Right. So you then make that decision. Mm -hmm. So we've got four possible choices. Right. Choice one is that it's pending. So I, we haven't made a decision. We're not sure yet. The ball's still floating around. On what the graphic format's going to be. Right. And it quite hasn't quite landed yet okay. as to what the decision so is. So we'll list it as pending. Yeah, so it's pending. Mm -hmm. We can put in text so that we're literally saying what is the decision. decision. Yep. So if the decision is what version of the S1000D specification we're writing to, yep. you literally write in the version of the spec that you're going to write to. Yep. Version issue 4.1, 4.2, 3, 2.2, whatever. Yep. whatever. Mm -hmm. You're literally writing that information. Yep. The next is the decision value. And this is where it's a choice of yes, no. Okay. So you're going to make a decision of are we doing blah, yes or no. So, and we'll come back to how that makes sense. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm lacking some information here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then the last one is an explanation. So with the text decision, you can then also put in an explanation mm -hmm. as to why you've made that decision. Okay. So you could have some background information. Yeah. And, and I guess also because this document does evolve. So as, as projects move, business rules change. And so you may need that explanation for as things are changing, right? Correct. So, so these are the core decision points. Mm -hmm. Over and above that, there are two additional things that we really need to consider when we're making the decision. Okay. Okay. The first one is Brett's rule flag. Okay. Okay. So if you insert the Brexit a rule flag attribute and you say to one, mm -hmm. it means that this information needs to go into your Brex. Oh, okay, nice. Radio. Okay. So as you're going through, you're identifying not only are these the business rules, but by the way, we'll have to include this in the Brex later. Correct. Right, so you flag it. Okay, that's nice because yep, you can run a report really on nice. that. Yep. 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 So we've got that one. Yep. And the next one is your severity level. Oh, okay. Okay. So this indicates whether or not you can have things such as, um, because inside this one you can't put warnings and cautions. So there is no warning it's and It's a descriptive, yeah. It's a de yeah. So descriptive type, yeah. It's a descriptive type. So you can't use warnings inside this particular structure. Okay. So what they do is they let you set the severity level. Right. Okay. And it's got some predefined attributes. Mm -hmm. So you've got, and sorry, I've got to refer to my notes for this because I can never remember them. Yeah, but you've got BRSL01, 0203, 51 to 99. Right, okay. okay. 01, most severe. That okay. counts being defined inside the spec. Right, okay, most severe, yep, yep. Right 02 is medium severity, mm -hmm. and 03 is least severe. Mm -hmm. So they're the three that the spec has defined. 51 to 99. You can make you can up some other levels. Own. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can then define that information. Mm -hmm. So instead of having a warning, you relate to the severity. Severity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm sorry, this is really heavy going stuff, mm -hmm. but just to try and get the understanding of it. Okay. Now, there are some references that are available for you. The first one I'm going to point you to is actually the specification itself. Yep. So if you go to the issue 4.2 spec and go to chapter 252. So this is where it talks about the business rules. It's talking, not just business rules, it's talking about the BR docs specifically. Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is the read me chapter for business rules mm -hmm. and BR docs. docs. Okay. Okay. So what it does is it provides a suggestion of how to generate your business rules publications. So it looks at things such as how to identify your stakeholders, decide the layers of your, your BR decision and documents, yep. the structure, your index on what you're going to make as the decisions, your severity levels. Um, it can review all the chapters to determine any additional decisions that need to be made. And it can also allow you to define any of the non-contextual business rules as well. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to be able to produce your business rules document and do the verification with all stakeholders. So remember, it's not just for you. It's mm. for you, your customer, and your subcontractors. Yeah. Everybody's got to work to these business rules. And then across department, you know. Absolutely. Logistics and engineering and... <laughs> yeah. Yep. You've then got to be able to produce your test data and also be able to test it and evaluate those test data. 
And then the final thing, of course, is then you're going to start to work on your life cycle. How often are we going to be updating? How often are we going to be sending this information to the customer? Mm -hmm. That life cycle process. Mm -hmm. So 252 really is start to finish on the whole VR docs process. Yep. Yeah, and your business okay. rules. Mm -hmm. So always, if you haven't got it already, jump up to the s1000d.org website and download 4.2. And take a look at that chapter. And take a look at least that chapter. Mm -hmm. That'll give you your starting point mm -hmm. of what you can do. Right. Okay. Now... <clears throat> Out of the spec, these are some of their graphics to give you some idea on what you've got to do to consider your business rules generation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, it's giving you that information of where are we going to get the information from. So we're looking at the BRDPs, we're looking at the schemas, we're looking at the bricks. We're going to develop all of this information. We're going to get input from all sorts of different organisations and people to eventually produce these business rules mm -hmm. in whatever format you're going to do. Yep. Of course, my suggestion is going to be S1000D data modules mm. because it's the logical way. Yep. And then from there, we then start to build and you and develop our bricks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is your business rules and then you've got your business rules usage. So again, you're getting all of these bricks information and you've got some sort of bricks checker Bricks validation mm -hmm. against the data. Yep. So again, we're able to identify that information. Yep. So okay. these are just, like you said, some of the workflow Correct. diagrams they've got up there. Yep. yep. So I thought it's just beneficial just to be able to identify to see. that information. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now that we've just gone through this whole theory of information, mm -hmm. let's just jump across and see if we can start to identify what some of this structure can look like. Yep. So, so some of the things that we've discussed, those elements yep. and attributes, um, and where they fit in the data module. Correct. So I'm just going to open them up in Writer because it's a nice, easy way for us to be able to see that information. Yep. Okay, so... And it always takes that little bit of time. So the first thing we can, we can see, we've got our identification status block. Yep. It's exactly the same as what we have for everything Any else. Any other data module? Yep. There's no difference there. Mm -hmm. And if we're referencing off to other things, we've got our refs block. Mm -hmm. But what we've got here is, so this was just some training samples that I grabbed. So the first thing we've done is we've identified the decision point mm -hmm. as to what is the decision. So this is obviously one. Yep. yep. So this is the very first one mm -hmm. that we've related to that's inside the spec. Mm -hmm. And with this, I've actually gone through and I've identified all of the business rules decision points, Yep. that index. I've put them into individual data modules. Mm -hmm. So I've got my 0 to 100 mm -hmm. and so, so I've gone through to develop that. So with this, we can see that I have reference to that data module mm -hmm. and I've referenced to the particular paragraph that it relates to. Mm -hmm. So I've then been able to get that information. So that's where I've got my related to. Yep. Okay. We then go into our category group, and the first thing we've done is we've identified which category mm -hmm. does this belong to. Yep. So if we go back to that... Cat 2, that, that um, 10... 10 different Looks categories. like a sun. Yeah, yep. it looks like a, a half a sun. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. So we're identifying what it is. We're putting in what is the title for that particular category, and what do we need to cover with it. So we're identifying what that information is. Mm -hmm. And then when we come down, we then come down to what is the decision. And the decision is, do we use the one, sorry, the I and the zero? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So the details for the spec says decide whether or not to use the alpha characters I and O. Yeah, because they can be confused, right? They can get yep. very confusing. Mm -hmm. And you can see here it's then defined the group and it's saying it's a single selection mm -hmm. of a yes or a no. Yep. So remember when we were talking about the... Yes. Where we were saying... Yep, and I said, what's the value group? <laughs> yep, yep. And I said, it's going to be a yes or a no? Yep. So we've now defined that the decision for this is a, it's a yes or a no. Yep. So then we come down into the decision. We give it its own identification. Mm -hmm. So again, we're going to create our own IDs for this. And if we want this to be in the Brex, we put in a Brex flag. Mm -hmm. So again, we're identifying... Yep, back to the, as we're documenting the business rule, should it go into the Brex? Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we put in 
what is our decision. Okay, so, so this is a pretty simple one fundamentally. It, so we're, we're talking about the should we be using the I's and the O's. Correct. Um, we've said it's a yes or no decision. Our decision is no, we don't yep. use these. Okay. Um, and it is important because when we start to prepare data modules, that is going to be important. So hence you've identified it has to be a validation point in our breaks Correct. as well. Yep. So yes, so we've made the decision and then the description about it is that we're not going to use the I or the O for our system difference code, our SNS, mm -hmm. our dis disassembly code or a disassembly code variant. Mm -hmm. Purely because an I and an O, one and a zero. They get very confusing. I mm -hmm. know they, especially the zeros, they're slightly different shapes, but at a glance, at yeah. a glance you may not be able to spot it. Mm -hmm. So we can then see yep. that that's been defined. Okay, yep. Okay. So a nice practical one. Yep. Nice easy one. Yep. The second sample, the big difference that I've done there is my source. Mm -hmm. So with that, instead of it going off to an external data module, I've put in an internal reference, mm -hmm. and here's the reference down here. So this is business rules decision point three, and yep. you've actually detailed it Correct. on the spot. So yep. instead of it going off to another data module to have that information, mm -hmm. I'm including it inside the BR doc. Yep, which you can do either. Yep. You can do either option. You said that. Yep. It really depends on which way you want to write it. You want yep. to write it. And with this one, <coughs> the decision is what version of S1000D are we going to write to? Mm -hmm. So the decision has straight text yep. of what version of the spec. Mm -hmm. So again, we're just putting out that information as to what is the decision. Yep. This one, because it's a non-contextual piece of information, having a BR, um, the BREX rule flag doesn't it help you, doesn't does help it? at all. Mm. So again, it doesn't give you any extra benefit for this to end up going into Somewhere the Somewhere, yeah. yeah. So again, you're able to identify those differences between how you can document your information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your choice as to which way, yep. but it does take time. Okay, they're okay. good examples. Yep, thanks Rita. So, if we then have a look, now there are a range of tools that are available and one of the best I would have to say that you can actually use would be from Victoria. Mm -hmm. She's the chair of the Business Rules Working Group. Yes. She is an, uh, an independent consultant, so yep. we're not advertising or referencing you off to some other massive organisation, yep. but she is... She loves the business rule side of it. She, oh, yeah. She's been she, working these for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> she has really been focused on me. Yeah. Now, she's produced two really good core tools for you. Yep. The first one is the book. Yeah. And it's, you get the choice of either a PDF or an actual physical hard copy book. Good old-fashioned book. Yep. 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 I ended up resorting to the hard copy. The good old-fashioned, so you can put sticky <laughs> notes all over it. Yeah. Sticky notes are all over it, and yep. the little notes sort of penciled into it the whole way through. Yep. Um, but what it does is it lists all of the decision rules. Yep. She's actually categorised them. Mm -hmm. So, again, well, that's handy. Yep. you're not having to do the categorisation mm, nice. yourself. Yep. She's yep. actually categorised them. Yep. And she has listed not just the BRDP index for version 4.1, but she's also done it for 4.2 because there was about 520 something for version 4.1. Yep. And then when 4.2 came out, they removed, about, they added. There was about mm. 80 that got dropped and about another 30 to 40 that got added. Yeah. So she's gone through and identified all of that information. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but she's also developed her own business rule index as well. Mm -hmm. So there's additional information of things that she feels you need to make decisions on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So her book, it's not a... It's a heavy reading. It's heavy <laughs> reading. It's not the cliffhanger type thing. <laughs> yeah. But yep. it does give you a lot of information. Yeah, a okay? lot of additional detail. So it's really, really good. And she's also developed the indexes in an Excel format as well. Mm -hmm. So you can go through and get her Excel spreadsheets depending on the version that you want. So if you're looking for her book, yep. this is the cover page of what the book looks like. So you can jump up to Victoria's website and you can see all the information there as to what's available with the book. It is a really good resource. So I've had to go through it and identify all the information. So 
please just do be aware. It is available for you to be able to get that information. Um, so if you want resources to help you, it's one of the best that's out there. And the spreadsheet, again, you choose which one is appropriate to the spec that you're working with. Yep, so 4.1, 4.2. Re please remember the index only came out in 4.1. So you need to think about it from the perspective of the version that you're working with. Mm -hmm. If you're working with anything below 4.1, I'm sorry, the only way to do it is literally to go through the whole spec, spec and find those and things. find those decision points. Yep. So you can then identify okay, so that. So 4.1 did identify the index, but 4.2 actually has the BR docs. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yes, so at some point in time, you then need to make the decision on how you're going to document your business rules. Okay, so that actually raises a couple of questions there, Rita. Um, so if, let's say, my project was currently, um, let's say, a 4.0 project, yep. and I had written my business rules um, currently in Word, is it possible that I could um, move that content from Word over to the 4.2 um, BR docs, could I actually decide, okay, I'm going to structure them, I'm going to um, basically use, you know, it, it prepare for evolution <laughs> and um, I'm going to put my content that wasn't my, my Word document and, and start putting in the BR docs schema. Um, because the BR docs is 4.2, can I do that for a 4.0 project? Yeah, look, you can. Yeah. You just need to make sure that when you're documenting the information, you're actually using the 4.0 Content. specification, you can't use the 4.2. Mm. So you can still write the content in 4.2 structure, yep. but you've got to make sure that you're relating it back, back to, to the 4.0 spec correct. because my project is actually using 4.0 data. And you've got to make sure that your Brex is a 4.0. Yes, okay, so we've got to keep okay. everything validating against a 4.0. Correct. Yep. So you've got to make sure that you're following that because 4.0 and 4.01, they're sort of like little orphans actually when you look at it because um, 4.1 and above, the internal cross-references change to the wonderful IRTT value, yeah. whereas 4 and 4.01 uses figure, table and power. So stuff. there's quite a few things. So there's yeah. quite a few things that are a little bit different in the 4. So 4.1 and 4.2 are closer, but 4.0 and 4.01 are on yeah. their own. So yeah. if you've worked up until B3, yeah. there's, there's three and below so kind of thing. thing. Yeah. Then there's four and four zero one. They kind of sit by themselves and then you jump up to four one four two. Okay. So there are almost like three categories of areas that you need to be aware of. Yeah. But yeah, there's no reason why you can't write your business rules with the four point two yeah. BR doc. Yeah. But you've got to relate it back to the version that you're working of with. Of the spec you're working with. And that does raise another question. So if, if we looked at like, um, you know, you've written our um, business rules in 4.1 descriptive data modules because the BR docs wasn't available. Correct. Um, would, do you think it would be worthwhile upgrading those to 4.2 BR docs data modules? No, not at this point in time. Okay. Um, I would consider that if we got to a point where the information you're writing into the BR docs, because if you remember when we look at the BR docs, yep. we're not defining any ex-parting information. No, we're mentioning it needs to go into a Brex, yeah. but we're not putting in the ex-parting ex information. Yet. Yep. If we got to a point where you need to document the ex-path yep. and then the tool allowed you to auto-generate the Brex, Your Brex. God, yeah, I would and, definitely do and, it. And, I mean, there's talk about that's where they want to head with this, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's been kind of the ultimate goal of this whole BR Docs process, right? Absolutely. When I spoke to Victoria in June, because um, we had a bit of a chat about... At the conference. At yep. the conference. Yep, yep. And the BR Docs schema, because I was trying to get my hair around this thing, going, oh, it yep. is so hard. Yeah. And I said, well, why don't we have the ex parting information in there. Yeah. So it's the most logical place for us to then put it. She said, oh, we had it in the schema, but to get the 4.2 out, we had to remove it from the schema. Right, they didn't have time to complete it. No. Okay. So the view, based on the little hints that she's dropped, she's still continuing to work on some more enhancements. Mm -hmm. So I would be expecting... And she said somewhere around December. This year? This December year. this year? Oh, a Christmas present. Could be a okay. Christmas okay. present. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yay. Yeah. S1000 Christmas present. Hey, 
We love those. <laughs> but she said that around December they're hoping to have possibly another update that might have some further expansion on it. Okay, so maybe like a 4.2.1 type yeah. of, yeah. Um, because we shouldn't be getting the next major release of... So not a 4.3 or a 5 because they said we're not getting them that often now. No, they're yeah. every two years. Yeah. And really the hope is that the next version would be version 5, five. of the spec. Okay, and that's going to be big. And yeah. it's going to be big because I don't know if everybody realises, but if you open up the spec, the PDF that we're reading, that's all written in Word. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah I do, I do realise that. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah. So the plan is that when version 5 gets released that they'll actually be breaking it down into data modules. So they need to physically burst it all and break it down into data modules. So the people authorising the spec will actually write to the spec. Ooh, ah, what a concept, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to get oh, a yeah. copy of the data <laughs> modules that they so actually produce. I, they would make great samples <laughs> that are not bike. I think everyone's sick of looking at bike. Yeah. So they, they'd make great samples. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can get a lot of information from it. Yeah, but yeah, we really need to sit back and just wait. So the best thing to do is... Well, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? That as you're writing your BR docs, you're not only indicating that it's got to go in the BREX, but you include the X part thing so that it auto-generates your BREX at oh. the end result of it. That would just be like the bee's knees, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, absolutely, because you're all in the one central location. Yeah. And when I was speaking to Victoria, you know, there's still that toss-up at the moment as to are they going to continue with the BREX or is the BR docs going to take over? Right, so okay. So because it's already got all the information, mm. do we just leave it all in the BR doc document? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's still a whole range of different conversations. So on where they're going, okay. So, so we'll see if something comes out for Christmas. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's where we're basically at. Yep. And um, as I said, it is a heavy theory topic. It's not exactly the most exciting topic. And, and you said Victoria's book is like another 600 pages, yeah? So you read the spec and then you read her book. Yes. Just, okay. Yeah. Yep. But she's been able to analyse things and give you some extra in that indications and she's also Got highlighted yep. um, what the changes were between 4.1 and 4.2 for each index because things were changed, some were minor Subtle. changes, yep, yep. so it might have been just a small change in the title or a small change in the paragraph of the definition for that index. So she's actually gone through that A lot thing. of detail that very, very obviously you didn't want in the spec, but um, for those that need to dig into the topic, it's very yeah. helpful. So it is quite, quite helpful. So yeah, great resource. I, I have put those links that were on the PowerPoint. I have um, popped them into the chat window yeah. for everyone there. Um, and uh, obviously uh, when you exit today, uh, you will find that there'll be an alert just pop up indicating, um, you know, did you find the topic helpful? Do you need more information? So if you do need more information um, specifically about anything that was presented today, then please just send us a question on that. Uh, there's also a little window for if there's a specific topic that you want us to discuss in upcoming webinars, um, please fill, uh, fill that in. So as we exit that little uh, web page, will just pop up yep. asking those couple of questions. Um, can you just jump back one page? Sorry there, Rita. Um, and, of course, uh, my email and Rita's email is there as well. Uh, should you have any questions that you want to send us directly yeah. on the topic, feel free to do so. But um, you, uh, for automatically... Um, you know, attending today and being a part of this process, you will get a link to the webinar recording. Correct. So we have recorded today's session and so that you can um, play through the session again and there's obviously then you can grab the details as well about um, Victoria's book up there, which is a wonderful resource. Thank so uh, if there's, uh, we'll just give everyone a, a minute to see if there's any other questions that we have, Rita, but uh, I have to say, I, I truly thought this topic was going to be absolutely boring. <laughs> um, yeah, as you said, it, it can be a heavy topic. There is a lot of detail. I mean, the fact that Victoria was able to write 600 pages says that it, it can be a, a pretty heavy and detailed topic. But um, I found it really, really interesting and um, informative. So thank you very much for uh, sharing uh, the resources that you've been utilising as well. Um, it's good to support, obviously, um, you know, not only is Victoria obviously a great consultant, but the fact that she's been working, um, you know, for free um, with oh. the working group. And I, I think she's been there for probably seven plus years in that, you know, working group. So um, it's, you know, well well done to her. And it's, I'm glad she can um, extend her knowledge and um, make something of that as well. 
Yeah, look, she's a really lovely lady and her enthusiasm on business rules is is huge. <laughs> you just get kind of blown over Swe every Swept time. up into it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so she's definitely, if you do go to any of the conferences, certainly connect with Victoria. Yeah, if you've got she's worth having a chat if you've got any questions on business rules and breaks. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent. So, yeah, so, so Okay. So. Well, we don't seem to have any other questions today, Rita, which is great. We finished just a couple of minutes early, which is awesome. Don't hesitate as um, you leave, like I said, to leave any comments and any other questions you have. We do have um, a final topic. I think it's a um, going to be a software-based topic. Um, oh, no, we've got another two. two. We've got October and November. Mm -hmm. We've got some webinars coming up. So I think we've got software and then another... Uh, theory. Uh, yes, it's with one of our partners, yes. Graphics. We've got graphics. a graphics topic coming up yep. in November. Um, so we're uh, looking forward to announcing the, the dates and the details about those. So keep checking back to our website on those webinars coming up. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing you in that session, but thank you for attending with us today. And we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone.